da, 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 da. Good morning, everybody. How are ya? It's uh, the 7th of May. 7th or 8th. It's the... Uh, it's about zero degrees now. And uh, we're on the pond. Good morning. My name's uh, Brent Bashera and... Uh, we're just gonna go for a tour around the pond. This morning, I just wanna share, you know, the things that I'm geeking out about these days, the things that are uh, truly, truly amazing in this world that we live in. Oh, wow, it's so beautiful. chickadees I heard the jays this morning robins have been up since uh, four o'clock when I went to bed uh, this morning I got up at uh, two o'clock I couldn't sleep because I was just so wired with uh, life energy uh, the more I study about life the more the more it excites me the more it charges me so I got up uh, the book I'm currently reading right now is uh, Three Magic Words by Ulds Anderson. And it's a very cool book. It's a book where he talks about, I believe it's a he, Ulds, I think is a guy's name. Maybe it's a girl's name, I don't know. About uh, the world we live in. You know, it's also one of the books like uh, Prentice Mulford wrote, uh, Thomas Troward. Uh, other people have been writing about since the 1880s. Uh, I feel the 1880s was uh, a time of breakthrough when people realized that they weren't going to be uh, uh, burnt on the cross or stoned or beaten to death because of their own world views, you know, and uh, a lot of the stuff that I want to talk about if, if I was to express in certain parts of the world, uh, you know, harm could come to me or members of my family. So I'm very thankful and grateful that I can share this understanding uh, with you, you know, in the world that we live here in, in this uh, first world nation of, uh, you know, North America, Canada, and the U.S., that we can truly express ourselves, the freedom to uh, share our understanding of the world. Um, hey, can you see the moon? Let's see, can we see the moon? It's a beautiful half moon today. Let's see if we can see that. Can you see the moon in that? I don't know. Hmm. Anyways, uh, just to let you know, when the moon's at half, let's see if I can line it up. When you're at half moon, if you can see it, the part that points the seam of the moon that's like this, and it's that seam that's pointing down, that's pointing south. So if you need an AIDS navigation, when you see the half moon, you know the line it makes is pointing south. So, wow, what a day. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is today. I'm so fortunate to be on the pond and uh, living with my, my babe, my bride, in the house that we have. Um, it's our dream house, one our first dream house. And uh, she's my dream girl. And uh, right now, I currently have my dream job. Uh, what, do, what do I want to share today? Well, first, let's have a sip. Mm. Wow. So, the things that I'm geeking out today is that the, uh, the scientists, the, the physicists, the men and women of today are expressing using their machines their metering machines are able to they're able to describe the world around us but they need their machines to meter it because for them to uh, qualify it and quantify it they have to be able to measure it they have to be able to meter it with their machines and that's what makes them scientists uh, they have to be able to meter what they're looking at and if they can't meter it to a lot of these fundamental people that it doesn't exist, right? It doesn't exist to them because they can't meter it. They can't 
uh, write it down per se, you know. Uh, so, but I feel that there's so much more to the world around us that uh, we can't even see. Uh, for example, um, you know, it's like life. You can only see the effects of it. You can't actually see uh, uh, it. Like you can't see love. You can't see love. You can't see gravity. You can't see electricity. But, excuse me, but you can see the effects of those those energies. And, you know, that's what the uh, physicists are showing us now is that we're living in a sea of information. Can you see the mist on the pond? <laughs> it's pretty cool this morning. Um, and we're living in this sea of information. And now what they're talking about is the matter. Because matter is energy all around us. Everything, all the composition of our bodies, this boat, the water, the air, is all uh, matter, right? Matter that can be metered and measured. But now what they're finding out that everything, everything has energy. Everything is energy. But also... We're finding out that everything has has consciousness, aware of itself. It has, you know, an awareness of its its presence in the in the universe. So the scientists, men and women, are now using their machines of meter able to prove or show evidence for that the uh, uh, that the world is made of of energy and oh wow look at that I just gotta turn this around just check that out. Ta-da! Can you see the mist on the water? Ta -ta 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 -ta. It's pretty beautiful. So, what all that these scientists, uh, men and women of physics, uh, astrophysics, and such, are proving now that uh, what a man and or woman wearing a loincloth 5,000 years ago, uh, sitting in a grass hut, has been saying all along that we're all connected. That when you go small enough down to the quark level that there's a underlying connectedness. Everything dissolves down to its basic code, its basic root of uh, ones and zeros, right? Because it's all ones and zeros, right? It's all just information and data. And that's that's what I want to share with you today. Is And this is the stuff that, I, that, that gets me up at night at 2, 3, and 4 in the morning to get up and study it and read more about it. I've had the luxury of studying because... Um, when I retired from the military, I love what the shamans say. They say that uh, luxury is having a lifestyle and a family that supports your view of the world. And that's truly what I've got now is, is that is a, a lifestyle that supports my view of the world that allows me to study all these amazing poets, prophets, and professors and studying it from ancient times, from ancient quantum, uh, uh, or sorry, ancient tribal wisdom to current quantum understandings. And it allows me now to study it and live with wonder, live with complete wonder like I used to when I was a five, six, and seven-year-old of uh, this amazing world around us. But if we're stuck in meter and if we're stuck, on, uh, stuck in matter, that is, and we're stuck on the, the survival wheel, then um, things like wonder won't matter to us because we're too busy paying the bills, taxes, getting to work on time, and things like that. So uh, since my retirement in 06 and 07, uh, from the military after 24 years, uh, where I served as a in the infantry, I served as a Navy bomb disposal diver, I served in the Special Forces, I had two tours, one in Cyprus, one in Afghanistan. I got back from Afghanistan in March of 04. And um, what it gives me now is the luxury of being able to study these things. And I wish this is the stuff that they taught us in schools, but they didn't even know that stuff existed back then because the school system was you know, is loosely based on an 1880s labor model that all they really want us to do is be smart enough to pull levers and punch buttons to make uh, uh, more matter, more stuff. And I'm glad we do have the stuff because it allows me now to share and communicate uh, with the world. We've got great methods of production. We just need to create great methods of uh, distribution. So... Uh, you know, we have atoms and molecules. Now what they're showing now is that the atoms and molecules now are, no, are um, uh, and this is what the current quantum physicists are saying, is that the, uh, the atom and the molecule is, is not full of protons and electrons, uh, but more so that, that those, those aren't actual things, that they're more like points of information. They're more, uh, it's more like the atom 
is more of a cloud. It's kind of neat, the Adam and the first man is, is Adam, right? It's kind of cool. That's a neat uh, synchronicity. So in that sea of information that we have, this cloud of information, uh, before the cloud of information shows up, it's living in a field of potentiality. It's living in a, uh, a field of probabilities, okay? That uh, a tree falls the way it leans. So in this sea of information, it's a wave. And this is what the, the physicists talk about, how the, uh, uh, there's this double slit experiment. All the stuff you can look up on YouTube that I mentioned. This is where I found my stuff in my research and reading and following up on YouTube. So you can easily find the stuff that I mentioned. Because I found it for myself and was able to see uh, the patterns uh, within the system. Okay, and that's, and that's what this is, is. It's the patterns within the system that I've... Uh, found out and figured out for myself and that's what your tax dollars paid for was for me to be really good at recognizing the patterns in the system to be able to you know uh, do my job within the military to be able to take a complex situation a dynamic situation and render it down so that a, an army guy or army girl could uh, understand it and that's uh and i, I feel I've, i'm i'm on to something pretty pretty powerful and that's what uh these uh uh, writers like the Prentice Mulford, uh, Thomas uh, Troward, and these guys. Um, there's so many, I just can't remember the names right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll list a, a, a book. Uh, Thoughts Are Things is one book, um, etc. And there's numerous books that came out from the 1880s to the 1920s. Uh, one of my favorite books is by Charles Hannell, uh, Charles H. Hannell, and uh, R.H.? And it was Charles Hannell, with two A's, H-A-A-N-E-L. He wrote a book called The Master Key Principles. And uh, in his book, uh, he talks about how to rewire our brain because our mind, this, this is all mind-based. Uh, uh, what the experience we're having right now is, is completely mind-based because we can only perceive the, the world around us through our senses, right? And, and it gets filtered through the the hub of our brain right so for example the things that i'm witnessing right now the mist on the pond the fish jumping uh the eels swimming underneath the boat uh they're they're i'm able to see them because of the light waves right because of the light that's being cast now by the sun it's hitting the back of my retina sending uh, electromagnetic information to my brain it's then interpreted and then i see it as being this and that. When you watch babies being born, right, they're learning to see the world, okay? And we now know that, uh, and that's ones and zeros, right? We can digitally reproduce that. We can digitally reproduce sound, right? So when I hear things, it hits my tympanic membrane, sends electromagnetic signals to my brain. I interpret it as, as sound and I can hear it. I can hear the blue jays, I can hear the chickadees, I can hear the robins. And that's information ones and zeros, because it's sound waves, light waves, traveling. Once it hits my tympanic membrane, uh, it stops being a wave and it becomes uh, data. It becomes information that gets interpreted in my mind. And then I interpret it for what it is, the information which I know it to be. And what's neat is that information can be, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Um, I might think of it one day as being this, but then when I hear it again in another day, it, it'll have a different meaning. So the meaning of the information I'm getting is only the meaning that I've given it or uh, given it or learned it from either my mom, pa, siblings, my friends, or society. Uh, same thing with our this, the uh, smells, uh, tastes, these sensations. It's all just electro magnetic information that's being interpreted by my brain it's being uh, analyzed it's being compared and then it's being given a meaning based on the meaning i've given it based on my culture based on where i live based on who i've grown up with so it's just information and data uh, and then and but it's being observed in the present moment so before the present moment is uh, we live in a um, again a sea of potentiality and when those particles, particles, before they're particles, they're waves, and that's what they talk about, the, the physicists talk about the collapse of the wave function. It's taken me years to figure that out. And what it is, is those waves of information, all the potentiality of things, as soon as it's observed, like the classic phrase is, is if a tree falls in the forest, is it hurt? Meaning 
what the, what the phrase is leading to is that if it's not observed, it doesn't exist. Well, that seems to be the case that the uh, uh, physicists are now shown us like Russell Targ and Hal Putoff, you know, really smart guys that invented the remote viewing uh, project with the uh, the natural uh, psychic Ingo Swan back in the the 70s, the late 70s, because the CIA uh, uh, read a book produced uh, out of Russia uh, or based on the Russian a psychic program and it was the um, program of hidden secrets or hidden psychic secrets behind the Iron Curtain or psychic discoveries behind the Iron Curtain and what it talks about is how they're using their psychic program to uh, be able to perceive things beyond the body beyond the, the mind oh, watch my cord sorry about that of uh, objects persons place or things uh, out of space and time or in in any part of space or time any person place or thing in space or time and um, so when the the CIA read about this book in the uh, 70s they realized that they didn't even have a psychic program that they didn't even know psychics exist so they in, they decided to get really smart people to figure this out and so they got Russell Targ and Hal put off and Hal and Russell worked on a, a program the remote viewing program for over 20 years and they and they, they they're still doing research in it and you can look up russell's talk russell targ's talk on ted uh ted talks about um uh, uh his work with it and the the power of our natural intuition and that's what uh edgar casey says the uh, sleeping prophet back in the 30s and 40s said that our intuition is our greatest psychic gift our gut feeling our gut check but if we never practice it because it's a muscle then it then it can't happen right our ability to uh, perceive things you know have you ever received a phone call and moments prior you go i haven't thought of that guy in uh in, in forever and then all of a sudden that dude or dudette is calling you on the phone well for myself uh, uh years ago uh 10 years out in 2017 i was brushing my teeth and all of a sudden, uh, a good friend of mine, Darren, from the uh, military when I was in the SF, uh, I thought of him and I said, wow, I haven't thought of Darren in easily uh, 10 years. Oh, it's nice here in the Lee. And um, I haven't thought of Darren in 10 years. And it was, wow, last time we were uh, together was on that exercise. Anyways, I go to my email box and there's, uh, there's an email from him right rupert sheldrake has uh an experiment two experiments which are very cool is it's the the feeling of being stared at and also uh dog owners or dogs know when their owners are uh, coming home so um uh what rupert did in his uh, uh experiment was he uh would have dog owners go to town and they put a camera on the the front window of the house and uh and he gave the dog owner an envelope and when the owner would go to town he'd open the envelope or she they would open the envelope and then it said come home at this time at that time um uh at that time the, at the, the moment that the dog owner decided to come home the moment the dog owner decided to come home the dog would run to the window and uh see if they're coming home and you can look this up on uh, YouTube uh, Rupert talks about it um, and he also talks about the feeling of being stared at where he did experiments with people uh, even using uh, CCTV cameras and, and and the fact is people can sense when they're being stared at my sergeant when I was in the infantry even said when we're sneaking up on sentries not to look at their spine because that would give them the the sensation that they knew that somebody was coming in and you can feel that too how many times have you looked across all of a sudden had the sensation looked over and seen someone looking directly at you so this is part of our natural uh, uh ability and you know it's what's allowed us to survive you know back in the day of cavemen and cave women and caves to uh be able to perceive like is this a good cave to stay in tonight and then no, no let's go to another one that kind of concept uh so that's a uh, part of our ability to perceive the world. Uh, Russell Targ, Hal Putoff, and Ingo Swan would do experiments uh, and they would do 
these outbound experiments with their um, uh, in the remote viewing and what it, in the remote viewing how they came up and developed it because uh, Ingo was uh, an artist artist in the sense that he wanted something more that was challenging and so he uh, they came up uh, through the process of um, where they would have two guys in a room Russell and Ingo would sit in a room and uh, Hal would go off somewhere and then at the prescribed time uh, they would uh, start the session and um, so it starts off with uh, just a six finger a six figure coordinate they used to use the the latin long on the planet of what's happening here but they they since realized that because the whole program the whole game is just based on intention that uh, you can write down any six numbers or four numbers and because the intention is what's happening here uh, that uh, you can just write that down and the intention allows the, the psychic or the person with the, the intuitive to be able to perceive what the intention of the, the task is or what the target is. And so there's numerous uh, stories and accounts of, of the remote viewing program on, uh, on YouTube and you can look this stuff up. And since then, for the last couple of years now, I've been practicing my remote viewing and uh, I'm a part of a group and I've had great, great success with it. The group we're at now is achieving hits and percentages over 60%. When they first started this, like the, the odds of chance, uh, Dean Radin, also one of the Galileos of our time, uh, did an experiment with, uh, I believe, 200 students. 100 students were skeptics of like naysayers and the other 100 students were believers in our in intuitive and our psychic abilities. And the, the people, uh, the 100 students of naysayers, the most they could ever get uh, to hit was, uh, which is chance, which is 25% because they use, they're using a four, four pictures and one person is looking at the picture and the other person's receiving the picture. And so the skeptics could only ever hope to achieve is um, uh, 25%, whereas the, the believers that believe in psychic powers and like they, they were achieving scores of up into the 60s and 80 percent because they believe and like uh, the the great master hippie Jesus says uh, whatsoever ye believe in ye shall receive right and look at the phrase he says believing and he, and he says to the people that need to be healed do you believe because we're tapping into our intuition we're tapping into a field of information that we have an ability to, to affect, you know, mind does move matter, as the great Greek philosopher Virgil says, mind moves matter. And why would he say that in, you know, 2,500 years ago when he didn't even have a, an ability to meter the matter around him? Because to scientists, if they can't meter it, it doesn't matter. And so what we're proving now, though, that there's so much more information going on around us. It's like the, the fish in, in my pond here, they're, they think they're birds, right? As they as they, as they swim through the water and they're, they're swimming across the, the bottom of the water, they think they're actually birds, right? Because they, they don't know that they're in a medium called water, right? So as they're swimming along, they think that they're birds. Whereas we too are living in a sea of imperceivable information, different light waves, different sound waves. Good morning. And uh, we can't even perceive this information. We can't, we don't even have instrumentation yet to perceive the subtleties of the, the world around us. Yet with our intuition, you know, like the shaman and shaw women teach us is how to, to live with wonder, to be a natural person on the planet and to be able to live in harmony, in balance with ourselves, with our own system, our own onboard systems, and then live in harmony with the world around us. It's like, I feel, that the uh, the world that we're living in is is like a game. Uh, it, we, I feel like we're living in an amusement park. There's only one rule to the amusement park. The park opens at 10 and the park closes at 10. And what we do between 10 and 10 is up to us. We can go for a show, catch a ride, uh, go for lunch, or sit on the park bench. Just be advised the park is going to close. Uh, what do we know what happens after the park? Mm, we've got some theories, right? Some people uh, supposedly left the park and come back, you know. Uh, so if you're a fundamentalist and an atheist uh, and uh, a very left brain mind that you'll perceive the world or you'll think that we're only one time consciousness, that we're only here one time and, uh, and that's it. You only get one chance. We're one time goo. Whereas, uh, you know, 
if you're not uh, and you believe like the other 80% of the planet believe in reincarnation believe in uh, multiple lives then uh, then you will have an infinite amount of lives so one time goo infinite energy being having uh, a, a mortal experience temporarily and experience infinity and that's kind of where I'm hanging out because the math shows showing me the evidence plus also in my own life the the feelings I get and also the, the synchronicities and the serendipities and we'll be going more into that so one time goo infinite energy being regardless of your belief you know because to me it doesn't matter what you believe in my case is is it working for you is your is your belief structure your creed your faith your modality is it working for you and that's all i want to share is that for me it, it, it's rocking it's really working for me because i have a uh, a sense of the world that i can i can feel the world okay and it's it's just through a little bit of practice of meditation sitting still be still and know thyself and and now i'm getting a, a for me, for myself, because it's just my best guess. I'm not here to prove or persuade anybody, but I just want to share, you know, the wonder of the world. And if we never take the time, because we're sitting on our survival wheel and we're just keeping up, keeping up, keeping up, then we never get a chance to move over to the creative wheel and be able to really dig deep into our intuitive abilities, ability to uh, create our world based on our, our perceptions and how we truly feel about the world. So. I'm very thankful and I live with gratitude as much as I can, as much as I can. You know, I still have a monkey brain and to err is human and we all make mistakes. And, and that's the game is to try to make, uh, you know, less, less mistakes or try to make less mistakes today than we did yesterday. And that's the game. And so uh, that's why I only have gratitude and, and thankfulness. And uh, for where I am, I've got my 10 toes, my 10 fingers and, and a, a beautiful bride and a lovely daughter and a lovely family and uh, beautiful parents and grandparents and so I only have uh, thankfulness for that so uh, uh, what else so you know you don't have to take my word for it but just watch what happens you know the algorithms of life there are natural algorithms that line up with our synchronicities our serendipities uh, let's see here what else um, for example uh, 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 my dream job for example uh, and this is kind of how it works and it, you know and you can also look at this like goal setting like Olympic mindset uh, Lanny Basham he talks or Basham Basham when you talk uh, listen to his stuff he, he, he talks about Olympic mindset about setting goals right and if you just lived in the material world and didn't know that you're actually participating with a uh, with nature that's actually I love the phrase that is never underestimate the power of the universe to provide for you your own unique experience. And, and that's what's happening. It's like that Star Trek episode when they beam down to that planet and they're all starting to manifest things around them. Uh, one guy manifests a knight, another guy manifests a tiger, uh, Jim Kirk manifests his old girlfriend, right? And, and that's kind of what we're living in is a field of information that is responding to how we perceive the world. The physicists, I, uh, Niels Bohr, Max Planck, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, uh, they um, knew that when they were conducting their experiments back in 1900 and 1910 and such, that they couldn't even be in the same room with the experiment because they knew they were affected. It. Since then, excuse me, we now know that even just thinking of the experiment, you're, you're affecting it. Ingo Swan, back when uh, Hal Putoff wanted to test him, Ingo uh, went out to the Stanford Research Institute, SRI, and in the floor, in, the, in, in one of the rooms there, there's this large magnetometer. It's the size of a, uh, a Cadillac, and it's, it's, inside the, uh, it's inside the floor, encased in, a, in, a, in an aluminum casing. It's shielded, and it's, it's buried in cement, so you can't even see the unit because it's all shielded and buried. And uh, it's a magnetometer, it's very sensitive, and they designed it to measure quarks. Quarks are the smallest known particle that we know of, right? And uh, so they wanted to uh, see if they could capture these, these quarks in the, uh, using this magnetometer. So Ingo says, but I don't even know where it is. How am I supposed to affect it? Well, Hal says, well, it's in the floor and it's buried. Uh, and it's buried, so that's where it is. So Ingo says, well, I need a piece of paper and a pencil to be able to do my, do my session. So uh, Hal gives him a piece of paper and he starts to draw it. 
the very moment he starts to draw it, the machine, the meter that's observing the uh, a magnetometer blips. It goes bleep like that. Well, in the room at the time, there was uh, uh, eight scientific students, Hal and, a, and another guy, and Ingo. And at the moment uh, that Ingo started to do his session, um, the, the meter blipped. <laughs> Several of the students ran out of the room because that's not possible because they're very scientific left-brained atheist types that you shouldn't be able to do that, that you shouldn't be able to affect matter with your mind. Um, and, and I love what Hal says in his great, um, you know, desire to discover more. He says to Ingo, can you do that again? <laughs> so Ingo says, let me try. And then um, he, and he starts to do his, his, you know, sensing, perceiving, remote perceiving, remote sensing of the uh, a magnetometer and at the second time he went to perceive it the magnetometer went bleep you know and it had been running for months with this beautiful sine wave and the two times that Ingo tried to perceive it bleep it, it uh, registered and you can see this uh, talk on um, YouTube Ingo talks about it in his own words and uh, the the scientist that was running the machine just said okay 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 stop 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 this this isn't working uh, the machine's obviously messed up, so he spent the next several hours going over and calibrating and, okay, okay, I'm ready to do it again. And then sure enough, when Ingo uh, went to perceive it again, it after having a nice smooth sine wave for a couple, three hours, uh, it went to perceive it with his pad and paper and bleep, it happened again. So, you know, and that's what the evidence is showing. And that, that was the, that was a strong enough evidence to have, you know, the CIA invest over 20 years worth of budgeting uh, to make that uh, project happen. So you know that the CIA is not going to uh, spend money needlessly because they had to answer to an annual uh, commission or board to a funding board. So, uh, and, but now the evidence is there and, and it's, it's quite, uh, well, for me, it's, it's no longer an aspect of faith. For me, it's, an, it's more a case of application. How can I apply my intuition to my own world? And um, so, you know, uh, for example, when I was at a trade show, uh, I invented the strongest knife tip in the world, called, and I call it the Besh Wedge. And so when I was at the trade show for, um, uh, for about 10 years, I'd been visiting trade shows since 2001. And uh, uh, for 10 years, I really uh, shared my Besh Wedge with the knife companies of the world. I've approached over 150 knife companies to date. Uh, going to trade shows, two trade shows a year, the SHOT Show and the Blade Show. And in, uh, and so I'd have 10 meetings a day and meeting one was just as important as meeting 40 or 45 after a four-day SHOT Show. So, uh, but in between meetings, because sometimes I'd, I'd have time, I'd have 30, 40 minutes between meetings because some meetings were just follow-up, is I would use my intuition and after the meeting I would just stop and I would listen and the technique I use is I listen on the inside and I go, where do I need to go next? Because you're in this sea, this maze of aisles and laneways and booths, you know, and there's thousands and thousands of people there. Well, uh, two of my best ones, three actually, uh, was uh, I talked to this guy at the SHOT Show about licensing a uh, pyrotechnic in Canada because I was in the uh, military at the time. And uh, so I'm at the show and I had this opportunity to... Uh, uh, license a new flashbang or something like that, a new pyrotechnic of some sort. And um, the uh, and I realized I needed to talk to my buddy Bernie because Bernie's the man to license these things in Canada. And after the meeting, I was so pumped. I uh, I was I was, had the meeting for about an hour and uh, I had time. And uh, so I go, this is a great opportunity. This is such a great product. I wanted to get it into the hands of the the my military brothers and sisters because it would help them out a lot and so um i said i need to talk to bernie to get this into canada i need to talk to bernie and in the sea of you know tens of thousands of people because it's like shoulder dressing it's just a crowd of people for four days uh as i'm uh thinking i gotta talk to bernie who walks out of that sea of people i didn't even know bernie was at the shot show he walks right out of the the sea of people i go oh my gosh bernie he goes brad what are you doing i go i got a, a licensing deal i want to uh share with you about this new pyrotechnic he goes you're right you need to talk to me about that and so uh, i got his business card and off we went another time uh, uh one of the uh knife purveyors uh, uh 
uh, at the uh, Blade, uh, but we're at the SHOT Show, yeah. We're at the SHOT Show in Florida, in Orlando, and uh, I needed to uh, talk to him, but we'd been communicating. I didn't have a cell phone at the time, and uh, all I was, I was using pay phones, and uh, I needed to talk to him. He was leaving his part of Florida to come to Orlando, and... Uh, uh, I needed to talk. I needed to spend 30 minutes because I, I had another opportunity, and I needed to talk with Larry about this. And he was the man to uh, make that happen. And I needed his advice on uh, on uh, I can't even remember the project, but I know I had to talk with him for 30. Oh, it was licensing deals. That's right, because of my best wedge. I needed to talk to him about uh, you know more advanced licensing deals that I wasn't really sure of, so I needed information. But I couldn't get hold of Larry because I only had a, uh, I only had the pay phone and and I couldn't work out and the, the, the line was sketchy and, and, and such, so I uh, I needed 30 minutes of his time and after you know at the end of a trade show they've got the uh, uh, those little uh, those little parties in the, in the hotel room where they have the sticky pickies and the and the, and the meet and mingle mingle party like that and so uh, afterwards. In this one hotel in Florida, you walk out of the elevator, there's these huge pillars, right? And you can either go right to the lobby, and after, I, and I, something said, just just listen for a second. And then I got off the elevator, and there's nobody behind me, and I got off the elevator, and, and something said, go left. But I had to go that way, because my hotel is that way, but something said, go left. I go around the corner, here's Larry, sitting at a little cafe, by himself, I go, Larry, he goes, Brent, you're supposed to call me. You're supposed to, rah, rah, rah. He, he busted my butt, right? And uh, I go, Larry, do you got some time? He goes, I got 30 minutes. He said before his wife was showing up. So I sat with Larry. I got right into the 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 nuts and the bolts of how to orchestrate this uh, licensing deal. And I had 30 minutes. Ding, 30 minutes showed up. Uh, his wife showed up after 30 minutes. And then he said, good luck, Brent. And off and off uh, they went. You know, several other times in between meetings, I would use my intuition and just say, where do I need to go next? And that C and that maze work of aisles and laneways. And several times I would go, rather than going to the next meeting, you know, because I had time, I would I'd listen inside and, and the, the feeling would say, go left or go right. And I would meet another knife company that I didn't even know exist. They weren't even, uh, uh, I didn't even know that they were there. I met the guy, the owner, the CEO, of VP of marketing or sales and uh and coordinate uh non-disclosure and then uh etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's just by following my intuition again uh if you don't believe it i'm not here to prove it or persuade but i'm here to share and it's there is something there like alexander Graham bell says i don't know what there is but there's something there so if you can you know uh open your mind open your heart you can open yourself to more perception more possibilities more probabilities you know for example, my dream job was year 10 of my military career. I was uh, seeing all my buddies get out of the military. One guy was going to deliver flyers. Another guy's going to train Rottweilers. Another guy's going to install in ground sprinklers. Another guy's going to work overseas with the French Foreign Legion. And um, I realized, wow, I better, you know, um, make my list. So I said, well, and I didn't have a piece of paper, but I made my list in my heart. I said, well, if when I get out of the military, I know I want to do something creative. I want to do something with my hands. I want to do something home-based. I want to do something internet-based. Something involves a bit of travel. travel. And I've since learned to ensure that I'm passionate about it. Like Einstein's, Einstein says, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. So, um, uh, and that's what I'm living now is my dream job, right? It's creative with my hands, home-based, internet-based, involved with travel, and I'm passionate. But before that, I was doing uh, I was doing uh, explosive work with the SWAT team in Toronto, and um, I saw this knife on a man's leg. He goes, "What's that?" He goes, "It's a Hayes knife." I go, "What's a Hayes knife?" Wally Hayes is the guy that makes knives. I go, "What people make knives? That's kind of medieval." And he goes, "He's a really nice guy. You should look him up." So I did, and we became best friends. He plays loud rock music. I played loud rock drums, and um, he taught me how to make knives. And I learned how to make knives in 2000. The next year, I invented the strongest knife tip in the world, and I've approached over 150 knife companies, and. Uh, you know, and I'm still receiving success from that, the efforts of that. And um, so that was my dream job. My dream girl uh, was, uh, I was in a relationship that was uh, four-fifths. Well, and uh, the l relationship I was in, it was four-fifths. Like the four, that I, the four of the five was really, really good. 
it was fantastic but that one fifth you know uh just wasn't working out i wanted to uh i wanted to have more people over i wanted to entertain i like having uh parties uh, go for walks after supper uh things like that and uh but it wasn't working out so uh while she went up to alert i was learning how to make knives through wally and um in in the backyard we had a chimney and so uh i just burned kindling at night thinking is this it is this it you just have to settle is this is this what it's about settling but i felt in my heart that hallmark you know says there's a whole industry about uh the you know that you can have five fifths so as a as a navy diver i was on my uh, last uh navy diver course in uh uh, in Halifax and we drove from Quebec City the nine hours and so we arrived at Halifax at uh, 11 o'clock and um, uh, I go guys uh, we got to go right up to the liquor dome because the lower deck's going to close at 12 because it's a beer and wine house and it closes at 12 so we go right up the lower deck Buffer Pico and I we take the uh, 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 we, we take our, our rental truck and we bomb right up to Argyle Street there's Rockstar parking right outside the liquor dorm. You never, it's like St. John's, you never find parking. And, uh, but there it was, Rockstar parking right in front of uh, my favorite bar, which is Cheers, because they play great live music. So we walk in, I go, Buffer, or uh, sorry, bartender, three double dark and dirties. Here you go, Buffer, here you go, Pico, ting, ting, ting. Welcome to Halifax, have a drink, bam! At that very moment, this beautiful set of eyes walk up to me and say, would you like to dance? I said, absolutely, because when a pretty girl asks you to dance, or a pretty person, you say yes. And so uh, we, uh, we had our four month fling and we hung out and uh, uh, Kellyanne said, the reason why people fall in love is because because uh, uh, you hold hands, you kiss and you call each other first names. So we say, right, no hand holding, no kissing, no first name. So I call her Besh and Pie. And uh, two months into the four month fling, she asks me, what are you looking for in a relationship? I go, well, I've got a list. She goes, you've got a list? Yeah, I've got a list. Because when I was burning kindling in that chimney, I made lists thinking, well, if Hallmark says you can, then well, what would I want for my list? So I made a top 10 list of what I want for my dream, dream, dream girl. And, you know, somebody outgoing, vivacious that I'm attracted to physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, who's a self-starter, who'd pick me up, you know, because I'm not always up. You know, I'm not always excited, you know, someone who would get me going, let's go for walks, let's, let's invite people over, those kind of things. Uh, I also wanted her to have her own art and also come from a large family. It so works out that uh, Kellyanne's got 47 first cousins and she's got her Bachelor of Fine Arts. And I'm sure you know now that we, we also work at our art uh, together. And she says to me, it's too bad that we can't... Uh, uh, we can't hook up in a relationship because I think I'm pretty much all your list. And I said, well, I have to agree that I think you're pretty much on my list, but uh, it, it can't work out. I, I, she lived in Halifax. I lived in Ottawa, so it, it couldn't work out. But, you know, as the, the one gentleman says, you just got to have faith. And so we did, and it, and it did work out. And, it, and it's, been, it's been amazing. We've just had our 17th, 17th year together. Fabulous. Anyways, it just keeps getting better and better. I highly encourage marriage or relationships with those that it, that it does work. Uh, what else? Uh, so that was our dream, dream job, dream spouse. And then together we created our dream house. Okay. And uh, so we used the techniques in Charles Hannell's book, the Master Key System. Uh, we uh, wrote out 20 criteria and for... Uh, and for uh, the because it's a 24 week course you read the same chapter uh, every day for a week and then you do the mental exercises at the end of the day or at the end of the uh, exercises and so after 24 weeks you've learned to be able to visualize in your mind exactly the picture of what you want to have and the feeling of uh, having that set up having that reality alive in the present moment what's the feeling of having your drum set up and that's the the other talk i'll talk about here shortly so uh when we were living in stainer ontario uh kellyanne uh we just sold our house because we always said our we had an 1880s farmhouse and we always said that the right person's going to come along and uh buy the house and sure enough she did and what's kind of neat is that her boyfriend uh he's a long-haul trucker uh and our neighbor the dude across the street uh her boyfriend and him they work for the same company they're both long haul truckers for the same company that was kind of synchronistic and then uh kellyanne says 
we sold our house. We've got nowhere to live. We've got to be out by the, whatever, 19th of November. I said, babe, remember the plan. We've got to stick to the plan that uh, we always said the right person is going to come along at the right time. And then we'll be able to find our house because we hadn't sold our house. So we have to uh, 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 sell it before we can buy it. And then uh, we, uh, uh, three nights later, at three o'clock in the morning, life energy wakes me up. It actually shakes me. I'm laying in bed and I get this shake. It's, and the voice says to me, go online, go find your house. Look at the clock. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm going, there's no way I'm getting up at three. Cause I hadn't started getting up at that early in the morning. And then, um, uh, and then as, as I'm going back to sleep, life energy shakes me and goes, go online, go find your house. So I said, right on, I go online, I go find my house. Uh, so for two and a half hours, I'm looking, I'm looking. Actually, I say to Kellyanne, I go, babe, I'm going to go online. I'm going to go find her house. And she's like, whatever, bubblehead. And she rolls back over. So I go online and uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. And it's two and a half hours later. And I find this uh, little website, Two Spouses That Sell Houses. And the thumbnails are a little small. Excuse me. And so uh, I, look at the, I look at the thumbnail and it looks good, but I'm reading the criteria. And out of the criteria, it has a lot of what we're looking for. So I email it to Kellyanne. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to roll over so you can see what I'm talking about. And so she goes and gets her sketchbook. And uh, what's really, really cool is she gets out her sketchbook. And she looks at the sketch and the drawings we have. And what we have is a, an A-frame, semi Viceroy house with uh, a two-car garage. And our shop in the picture. Uh, our shop is slightly right to the rear and I know I'm not in the right position but behind me is is my house our house and the picture was taken down on the lawn and what you can see is in our sketches we have the house and the shop my shop studio slightly right to the rear the MLS thumbnail shows the house two-car garage and our shop slightly right to the rear they're identical okay so that's the like we talked about in the beginning the remote viewing you know, the ability to preconceive, precog, to be able to preconceive events, to be able to tap into information into the future. And that's what we were able to do is three months previously when we made those sketches in the book, we were able to preconceive the house and, and have it lined up. And so what's kind of cool is we always said we wanted to live near family. And if you look behind me, right about there there's this little yellow shack and what it is is built by Kellyanne's great uncle Jack he was the first president of the star of the sea here in Holyrood and uh, he built that shack and Kellyanne's aunt or mom and her brothers and sisters Kellyanne's mom's brothers and sisters all used to swim in this pond when they were kids because and that's so how cool is that you know we can't get much closer to family unless we're living with mom so this is, you know, so that's how I created my dream job, dream girl, dream house. Uh, uh, another story of synchronicity is how uh, I heard a phrase once, uh, do more of that which makes you happy and less of that which doesn't. And so I really wanted to make more music. My shop was full of knife making equipment. I had grinders, sandblast cabinet, surface grinders, milling machine drills, you know, but it took up 50% uh, of my studio, my shop, and I wanted to um, make more room for music. So Monday morning, and this was the feeling I had in my heart, I just want to make more music and have people over and have Besh Fest where we have musicians and food, fun, family, and frivolity. And uh, so Monday morning, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing yoga in my uh, living room and I'm, and I'm in the position of down dog and the, the voice says to me, what's the feeling of having your drums set up? And wow, in order to create a feeling, because we know our thoughts, we've talked about this, right? Our thoughts lead to our feelings, our feelings lead to our actions, and our actions lead to our results. So I, uh, the feeling was having my drum set up and that sense of accomplishment of, yeah, right on, they're set up. And so uh, that was it. That's about as much as I gave it, the feeling of accomplishment of having my drum set up in the present moment. And then I went about my day. Well, the very next day, Jerry from Cornerbrook calls me up. He goes, hey, boy, I see you got, a, you got knife making equipment and milling machine for sale. What do you want for it? I says, well, what am I selling it for? I haven't seen that ad on Kijiji for uh, two years. He says, you're selling it for 
uh, 29. I says, well, I'll take 27 for it. He goes, sold. I'll be there Thursday. He shows up on Thursday, drives his big Chev three-quarter ton, right backs up into my shop. We load all the kit up, and it's it's all loaded up, and then he's gone. Sold everything, everything in one in one, uh, in one shot. So, um, and then that was the Thursday. I close it all up, uh, get ready for the party. I uh, set my drums up. Takes four hours because it was in a packing crate. My drums were in a packing crate for six years i can't believe that my drums were locked up for six years crazy anyways they were and I, it took me about four hours to set them out get all the heads and rims and cymbals and stands all set up and at the end of it after four hours i'm sitting back going yeah right on it's all set up and bam at that very moment it reminded me of monday morning at three o'clock in the morning when i'm doing down dog and yoga that that's the exact same feeling i had of of accomplishment of being was the feeling of having your drum set up and that was the feeling the exact same feeling friday or yeah thursday night late and and monday morning that was the same same feeling and so that's the the mechanism that's the that's it and that's what they they always say in the books about manifestation about i say the present tense and the positive but they never give you an example why don't you just give me an example of what it means to say it in the present positive sense tense so and that's what uh, was given to me that that gem, that cosmic nugget. Monday morning was that. What's the feeling of having your drum set up? What's the feeling of your dream job? What's the feeling of your dream spouse? And what's the feeling of your dream house? Well, that's that's what it is. It's the feeling of it in the present moment. So I hope that you can relate to that, and how I've learned to uh, create the criteria is by making a list, an A list and a B list. And uh, this is what I share in my workshops: is the A column is the things that you don't want to do. I don't want this in a partner. I don't want this in a job. Uh, I don't want this in a house. But the B column is the things you want to do because in the A column, you you create the criteria of what you don't want. Then de facto, it creates the the column of what you do want. Me, I've just kind of always known what I want, so I just always make the B list of what I want to be or where I want to be or who I'm going to be. And in that B list, right? hands creative home-based internet-based involved bit of travel and make sure you're passionate about it right that was my dream job and so the criteria you know the knife making it was with my hands it's home-based internet based involved a bit of travel and you know and i got to make sure i'm passionate about it and uh since then uh i'm working on an axe with jack axes where uh you know i'm working with fun like-minded happy people and that's and that's what i want to share is that you can be do and have anything in life just not everything and so that's the kind of uh uh aspect that i'm coming from is just really be be sure because we're all going to leave the park we're all leaving right so let's really enjoy the time we can with the uh with the tools we have and um because you know luckily for me as a sagittarius uh i found out i've had my chart uh, a professional chart done up and um, I'm a cheerful being by nature and, and luckily for me I have and I've learned through that chart that some you know I'm as a Sagittarian I'm very mutable I'm, a, I'm very flexible and able to change my life path in, over over a conversation uh, whereas some other people are fixed as she says that are they're not they're not they're they're fixed in the sense that they're not able to change they have long commitment to their paths and goals so my fixed factor is a little lower, but my mutable factor is very high when I'm able to change and shift. So I just want to share this, these gleanings with you from what I've seen living here uh, in the park. Okay. So, you know, you have an ability to not tap into our intuition. I feel like not tapping into your, your sight or your hearing. It'd be like, um, living without sight living without and that's what when you get so involved in the the matter world right when you get so stuck in mind because what does the mind do the mind is full of judgment analysis comparison right and that's what it does it judges analyzes and compares and if we're full of all this judging analyzing and comparison we can't be present to ourselves we can't be present to uh, the moment and this is where everything happens is in the present moment and what like what the shaman teach us is this divine moment the moment of creation is happening now in, in, in the present moment but we can only perceive it in the present moment but if we're being distracted by being in our mind by by judging analyzing comparison remembering uh, the past or uh, dwelling about the past or anticipating the future then then we're not present 
right? And the, the, the Shah men and Shah women teach us that this present moment is the divine, that creation's happening right now, and that if we're popped up in the belfry of our mind with the bats and the squirrels, because they love company, that uh, we're missing the moment where, um, that's it, we're lost in thought, we're lost in judgment, analysis, and comparison versus being present to what is. The mind is a tool, the, the brain is the, 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 the few pounds of matter that allow the circuits, the nodes, uh, to connect and fire those circuits of our mind. But the mind is the software, the brain is the hardware. And so it's up to us to write the code for ourselves, right? Like our culture, like where do we learn our thoughts from? We have 60,000 thoughts a day. Women have probably, you know, twice as many. And so what do we do is we, we learn to uh, control our thoughts, learn to just let them go and be more present. Uh, the shaman and shaw women say that the uh, if you're if you're missing the present moment, you're sinning, and it's an archery term, meaning you're you're missing missing the point. So by uh, being present to the present moment, you're witnessing creation right now. And if you remember, as a kid, we used to use our uh, imagination and stay present to the moment and if you've ever been around kids or dogs there's no way you can be doing your shopping list or paying your bills or doing your taxes or things like that uh, what a beautiful morning there we go we're getting close we're getting close i just want to show you the the uh the the sketch we're getting there so we are living in amazing times, and, but we're also living in trying times. And so it really behooves us to be uh, vigilant about what makes us happy, about what truly works, works for us. Let's see if we can see this now. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah, there she is. So if you notice, the house shops slightly right to the rear. Well, that's the sketch we made up three months prior. We made the sketches in March. So we just, uh, we're working on the Charles Hannell book, Master Key Systems. And then, uh, so I knew I needed a shop, a knife making shop. And Kellyanne said, it's got to be detached. So we drew up our sketches and sure enough, that's, well, that's what we have here. And that's what you can see. And uh, I find it absolutely wondrous. And so again, I'm, I'm very fortunate to now uh, be able to participate with nature. You know, I was reading those books, uh, all those books about manifestation uh, from the 1880s to the 1920s, and uh, it seems that there was a huge release of knowledge at that time because they realized, the authors of those books were realizing that uh, those seemingly uh, omnipotent institutions no longer had a hold on, on them, that we could release the knowledge without being chastised for it, burnt at the stake, stoned, beaten, whatever. And, uh, you know, that's the power of the Gutenberg Press that, that gave us the power of the, the common man could start publishing things. And that's what they've did. They've released from the 1880s to the 1920s this huge volume of knowledge. And again, only if you're interested in it. Me, I've got the luxury of a, of, of a family that supports my view of the world. And that's so that's what I'm doing now is just sharing this knowledge that I've worked at reading and studying and applying it to my life and sharing this information with others. So we're coming up on about an hour now and I don't want to take up any more of your time, but we truly are living in amazing times. You're an amazing person. If you're here now and you're hearing my words, know that you are you are amazing. You've already won the lottery because our, we have, what, 14 million sperm cells uh, and you're the one that made it through. I'm the one that made it through. So we're already in the park. We've already won the lottery so uh, again don't take my word for it i'm not here to persuade or prove to anybody but just share and and apply it for myself right i've got the luxury now of getting it for myself and that's it it's just my best guess and uh if it, if, if it can work for me it, it can work for others and it's helped me uh process my ptsds it's helped me uh you know, get at it and, and, and live well, live well with, with my family and friends and, and then help others, right? Help others in the tribe. So I wish you all uh, lots of luck. I wish you well, and I wish you uh, just complete success in your life. Because when we all step up to our own plate, and that's how I feel that we can really make 
the best social change possible is by just stepping up to our own personal plate. Don't worry about what other people are doing, but just really lean into what works for us. And the next thing you know, it's a day, month, year uh, later, and things are working, you know. Uh, and that's the beauty of, of this whole program is leaning into what works for us. So uh, that's about it for now. I've had the, the best time taking you guys for a row on the pond. And um, love you guys. Miss you wherever you are in the world. Uh, have a great Navy day. And if you have any questions, uh, you can get hold of me on the Facebook or on my YouTube channel, My Best Guess. And uh, yeah, ask any questions because that's, that's what we're here to is explore and learn. And uh, if you can tap into your intuition, you, can, you have access to uh, the potentiality and the possibilities of, of yourself, of living an amazing, amazing life. Warning, don't take my word for it. And warning, there might be a little bit of work involved. But once we truly commit to ourselves, because the accomplishment of our goals are assured the moment we commit ourselves, that path to our peace of mind, that path to our happiness is relatively short. But we just have to commit to, to that. And by making that list, by figuring out what we truly want to be doing and have in life, it creates clarity. Because when we find that thing that we love, we'll never have to choose again. And again, don't take my word for it, but we'll just watch what happens. If you've ever been in love or you've wanted to achieve that goal, how easy it was and effortless it was when you were excited and enthusiastic and were in love about making that happen. So, you know, that's about it. These, these are just words that I've used, that, that we use in our English language to express the thoughts and feelings that I've had over the last, you know, uh, since 2000 with making the, the knives, learning how to make my knives, and now axes and my dream. So that's my dream job. But now my dream job is this. This is the creative part of using my hands, my thoughts, uh, my mind to be able to share this information to make it as simple as possible to help people get it. So I hope it helps. Uh, I feel much better for sharing this information because it's it's pertinent and it's real and it's, you know, again, people wouldn't have invested great amounts of money to tap in to figure out how the program works using our intuition uh, if it didn't work. So it does work and it's very cool and uh, I've got other podcasts that'll be coming out about other synchronicities and amazing stories of just getting at it for, and again, it's only for myself. Right? I'm not here to prove or persuade, but just share. So wish you guys well. Uh, have a great Navy day and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Bye for now.